This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review for Sunday, March 6th, 2016. A good amount to cover. I want to start it off by telling people that if you happen to be catching this and the resolution is low, just pause it, reload it, give it a few minutes. I have no control over how quickly YouTube uploads the higher resolution versions. This is being shot in 5K. They don't even support that high, but they do support up to 4K. So I assure you there are some very high quality HD versions of this that are available. Anyhow, that being said, let's dive right in. I usually like to start out my videos with talking about the six market keys and then talking about the seven, really, I'm going to just now call, I used to say six Fed keys, now I'm just going to call it seven Fed keys because they have openly now discussed market volatility as being a factor, so I guess the uh, the bloom is off the rose there with that uh, secret. Anyway, um, let's start out with the VIX. I've created a few weeks now in, I've created a key for the VIX. If you're interested in um, going through that, if you haven't seen that in one of my videos before, you can hit pause and begin. If you are already have seen it, we're just going to dive right in. I'm not going to go through them and repeat it. I think it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. But the VIX I've proposed is potentially here in a transition from a period of lower volatility. You can see all these kind of contained highs into a, a, and relatively mundane uh, low volatility, potentially given the flash crash into a period here now of higher volatility. And you can see we're making a series of higher lows. And I wouldn't say, I mean, obviously we haven't reached the spike high yet, but we're starting to make some higher highs here um, inside of a potential new up channel. And I had speculated uh, that we would see the lower part of that channel. And we aren't quite on it. You can see here we just missed the touch, but we are dangerously close to the lower part of the channel. I wouldn't say there's really, quote unquote, it's not scary time until you get the VIX back up over these um, breakout levels here of the 1757 to really 1785. And you can see that the uh, 200 MA is just a little up there in the 18s. So that has been some resistance in the past, but I, I mean, it's really a range we're in. We're kind of ping-ponging between these lower, t these sort of middle teens and the middle to upper 20s. I always say that if we're below 25, 20, you know, we're kind of, we don't have that much, as much quote-unquote crash risk on. I'm kind of extending that to the 25, 20 to the 3106. Anything above there you can see has proved to be really rather unsustainable. If we start getting closes above there, I'm going to start getting some real, some agita, so to speak. But um, we are getting lower into the lower part of that area. I would be a little bit cautious and starting to worry a little bit about a market pullback. Although there are some bullish signals in the S&P, but we'll, we'll discuss that in a moment. The dollar has been, oh, okay. The dollar, as you know, I've discussed this, and it would help if the chart would load a little bit quicker, it has been in a relatively, I would just say a consolidation pattern. You have this kind of big bullish run, and we've just been in this kind of sideways consolidation pattern. Um, I have drew in a range here, any moves below and above, although the moves above are a little bit more stubborn than the moves below. Um, has been the really the consolidation pattern. So, and a kind of breakout within that area. So, that kind of breakout area here has we've been trading on either end of it. We are making some lower highs and starting to make some lower lows in the dollar, which is which is good. The danger really happens though if you start now resuming to the upside and making higher highs. Um, I've discussed on the channel. And I'm not going to go over that here, although I will post the link in the description if you look below, along with uh, there's the ticker list, and I will post the link to the probability of the Fed raising rates in there. The probability is quite low, um, really for the balance. It's under 50% for the balance of the year. Um, sort of toward the end of the year, obviously, it starts getting a little bit higher, but um, in the next few sessions, it's it's rather low, and I think that's really why the dollar is kind of chilled out a little bit. But it is still um, there's still a lot of risk here of a uh, upward thrust in the dollar, so you got to keep that in mind. If you like, I said this 25-23 area, it's um, 
it's a little precarious that we are still above there, but within the context of you know the 2568, we are not really kind of in danger of the spike. TLT. So this has been. I've talked about this for a while, and I think people have been kind of confounded with why are bonds staying so strong? The Fed is not doing um, their QE program anymore. They've actually announced that they're going to start, you know, they're now in the path of normalizing. I think the reason, though, is that the economy is still quite weak and that people around the world, I guess the banks around the world really, haven't created what the U.S. has in the means of FDIC insurance, meaning deposits on um, bank, you know, if you put your money in the bank, there's the uh, deposit account, you know, in a, in a bank account, they don't have deposit insurance. So if a bank goes bust, you're, um, you're kind of, you know, up the creek, the US has it. So I think rather than, you know, just flooding in, you know, and putting your money into uh, accounts, you know, uh, in the US opening up bank accounts, although I'm sure that's been happening. I think people around the world are seeing US treasuries as the safest place to go. And they are obviously federally insured. So what they do is they sell their currency, they buy dollars. That's why the dollar has been strong. And then they buy U.S. bonds because in you know iffy, scary times, people don't really worry so much about a return on their capital, meaning you know dividends and and share appreciation. They just worry about a return of their capital, meaning getting their money back. And bonds are a very liquid market. They're able to buy and sell them in fairly large amounts without moving the price up and down on themselves. So bonds did have a bit of a uh, spike move here. It's a lower high than here, but it is just kind of gently coming back. The real key area here is the 126.36, and you have a 50 MA right roughly around here. So I'm guessing that in the 126s, the 127s, that's going to be a little bit of support for these bonds, at least probably for a bounce. It is also possible we do come down and retest the really the um, trend line here as well as the 2009 crash peak, the 123.15. I've often said that as long as the one, as long as it were above the 123.15, you know, the bond market, the bull market in bonds is still kind of kosher. However, we have had periods of time where we've been below there, but we are starting to make some higher lows, some lower highs. There's a bit of a compression. You know, I'd like to say safely that I know we're going to, you know, eventually that the bonds are going to come down, which, I mean, longer term they will. Timing that is going to be very difficult. And I believe that as long as the economy is stall speed like it is and the Fed is going to remain accommodative, there really, really isn't a reason for this to completely fall apart. They're sort of, um, it's sort of the highest quality asset in town. The major driver of the market, and the correlation has been actually quite alarming, is in oil. And I've discussed that I thought 25-26 area would be significant. It has been. And we are now starting to make some higher lows and some higher highs. And we are just now peaking above a kind of interim down channel. Um, this range here, the 3320 to 37, was the bottoming process in the 2009, you know, 2008, 2009. So that area here is very significant. Um, we need to get really through that area, and you can see it's got, there's a lot of pressures above here. Previous um, resistance, um, some previous supply, as well as descending moving averages and past horizontal supports. So oil kind of has its work cut out for it, but the good news is is that for a first time in a long time, the 20 MA is moving up. It's probably going to cut through the um, through the uh, 50 for those of you with the you know the moving average convergence divergence types of uh, players. It's that's that's good. You also have a 50 MA which is flattening out and probably will start bending back up soon. So I think oil is kind of trying to turn the page. It wouldn't surprise me to see it back up close to 50 at some point. I know that's fairly controversial at this point, but that is the backside when we do get there of an old uptrend line and also some past resistance here in the 49s and even back up to 50. So that's kind of my thinking. The way I've been playing this mostly is with um, Exxon. Um, I buy it when it's kind of down near in the dumps and is in the lower 70s and then start selling it when it's in the lower 80s. 
that's worked. We look like we're consolidating here, building some pressure. Um, you have a 200 that's starting to flatten, a 100 that's kind of up, upward to flat, a 50 that's upward, and a 20 that's upward. So things are kind of brightening a little. You really need a sustained move through the 83s here. You can see we had a bit of a short squeeze, but I believe you really need to get through the 83s to... Um, to potentially get higher. I've said for a while, I think that we're going to see 100 again in Exxon. I just don't know when. Um, we, I, I like, I'm like. i going to stick to my plan, though, with this. I, I buy it on the dips and then kind of put it back out on the rips. Um, we are possibly forming a W here, so I do like it if you're playing for the momentum for a right or right out long, if you can clear the, um, the 83 area. The only problem is is that there are other defined resistances in here. You know, there's been a lot of technical damage here around like the 84, 86, 87 area. So we are getting a little bit toward that upper part of the range where you might want to be looking to, uh, to take some profits and then reload again on some dips. China. Uh, you got to have your China, right? So China had this big blow off in the market. It fell apart here basically um we broke trend we came back up looked to basically the broke breakdown point and then just completely collapsed we got down to the i think this is the 2011 um kind of lows we had a bit of a look below and fail and now we're kind of coming back up to this breakdown area we are basically just above the downtrend line this was the first close above there there Needs to be some confirmation, obviously. Um, that would be key. You know, if we just give this right back, it, it, it's not good. It's good that the 20, for the first time in a long time, is bending up. 50, though, is still coming down, and you have some moving average um, problems coming up. I do think that it's possible to have a throwback up into, like, this 36 level. Um, we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, I'm not really, uh, I, I like, I, this is a lot off the lows. I'm more of a buy the dips fan, you know. We are, though, however, making some higher lows here and some higher highs for the first time in a while. I'm just a little cautious that we're doing something like this where we're going to retest the breakdown area, and we are kind of just getting up into that area now. So I think that there's, and this is obviously where the dead bodies, you know, where all the buy the dippers kind of uh, first start getting uh, made whole. So yeah, I think there could be a little bit more room up, but I'm a little bit cautious with that. Um, one of the big Chinese stocks here is this BABA. Um, you could basically say you have a bit of a higher low in place, and it's trying to make some moves back up. The problem is, is as you start getting close up into the um, 77s, 78s, you have multiple distributions, all these people, all these people who were playing for a bullish breakout. This was a sideways consolidation that in, you know, a better market would have probably resolved higher. Instead, it resolved lower and just basically put up some more supply. All these people were made whole. It did some chop time, and then it just decided to kind of go lower. Uh, I don't necessarily dislike owning BABA if you want to buy it, but I believe doing it on dips is the um, the better move. If you're already long or you're looking to, or if you must play long, a 50 MA here, I would say if you start getting any closes below that 50, you want to get the F out. Um, I like this reference low here, 70, 46. Anything below there to me would be very suspicious, suspect. The Baidu, that's another one. This rallied up quite well. I was kind of looking for a retest of the trend line. We didn't quite get there. You now have a multi-day consolidation here for the better part of a week. I would, um, if you're going to be play long, you want it to clear that consolidation. If it breaks down below there, I think you could have a right or right out short trade, probably for a move down to the 50 or maybe even the 20. You can see the 20 here has been some support. You could play a short and then maybe even try and reverse on the 20 for a right or right out type of a trade. Okay, um, let's just get to this IBB here. Uh, this has been the absolute whipping post for politicians. Um, it, technically, it's got some problems, but you know you have Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, everyone talking about negotiating drug prices. That means potentially peak earnings for this industry. I know everyone talks about the low PE multiples, but when industries do top, that usually means the, um, the PE multiple is at its lowest. So you can see we had a head and shoulders top, the breakdown, the retest, 
Double bottom kind of held, it tried, it was forming a bit of an inverse head and shoulders, a, a false breakdown, a retest here, and then this, kind of like the Baba, uh, just completely collapsed. Uh, you have a regression line that it's basically holding. I mean, maybe there's a rally up to the 50-day moving average, but look where that would be. These hammer lows probably would set up for a good short for right or right out off of the 50-day moving average. To me, anything below this 275.40, though, is remains vulnerable. I would be starting to get interested in buying here if we do get the 100% retracement down between the 207s and the 212s. Excuse me. That area to me would get interesting for the buys. Uh, while I'm here, why don't we talk about the um, Fed keys for a moment? We did have a, um, a jobs number on Friday, and you... Here's the skinny on the jobs number. I think a lot of people like to kind of make a lot about the headline number. The good news with the with regard to the jobs is that the, I guess the unemployment rate is kind of low. They're saying it's below five percent, which is usually full full employment in an in a really healthy economy. The bad news is is that the the quality of the jobs. You know, there's a lot of part time work in there. There's a lot of people who are you know, haven't had hourly wage growth. They haven't, um, the average work week is going down. I think a lot of companies have started to go to part timing to um, kind of obfuscate the Obamacare tax. They don't want to pay the um, the health insurance. There's there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I mean, a lot of industries got exemptions. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a big consideration when you're hiring people. Anyway, that being said, both the January and the December numbers were up. Um, the I guess the labor force participation rate is getting a smidgen better. I mean, it's still just below 63%, meaning it's the lowest it's been since like 1977, 1978. I mean, I think I, I, I would like to blame all of that on the economy. I, you can in the sense that um, the one of the reasons about people waiting to, uh, you know, basically the country is getting a little bit older, the baby boomers are getting older, and it's sort of bringing the average age in the country up higher, the graying of America, sort of like what happened in Japan. And, uh, you know, society spend a lot of their resources basically taking care of the elderly and the sick. I would say that that is partially a problem because of the economy. A lot of people, um, young people, have put off having families and, you know, they've been staying home and living with their parents longer just because the economy isn't good. They're basically spent all these money on fancy degrees and can't get jobs. I mean, if you, I, you know, I, it's funny. I always tell my um, my friends with kids who are going to college or what have you, I ask them what they want to major in. And I always tell them, even if it's not your passion, always make sure you minor and do something. I would major, absolutely. I was, listen, I was a finance and marketing double major. Um, I think that majoring in business is, is absolutely essential. But, you know, if you want to be a uh, major in 19th century French poetry, um, just make sure you take some accounting classes too or, you know, some financial classes or management cl courses. Um, you know, the, the, this is a really big problem. People are loaded with student loan debt. That isn't, uh, you can't write that off in bankruptcy. Tons of credit card debt. And, uh, you know, uh, this is, this has really been a, this has been a really big factor in the economy. And I think it, it doesn't get enough, get enough airtime. Um, that being said though, uh, the, the good, the good news is, is that the numbers, the economic numbers, seem to be stabilizing a little bit. That theme kind of continues into the, um, well, the Atlanta Fed. They lowered their GDP estimate again recently, even with the jobs number. So that's not good. The we had an important number. You know, I've talked about ISM, and you know, a lot of people like to poo-poo the manufacturing. Although, believe it or not, I think the manufacturing is pretty important. But we had a service ISM. And while the headline number was below 50, and it was it granted a recessionary, you know, um, slowing contractionary number, the good news is is that the rate of change, meaning the amount it's going down, think of it as the speed it's going down, is slowing. So that means that the growth or what have you, we've at least sta starting starting to stabilize a little bit. Now, a lot of people want to say that these are kind of Goldilocks numbers because it means that the economy is, I guess, not going to slip into recession, which is a lot. I would, I would admit and say that it's a lot less likely now given some of these numbers. I mean, they are stall speed. They're not good by any means, and I don't want to give the impression where I think the economy is doing well by any shape or form. I think it is really doing poorly. 
but the kind of the speed that we're going down the road to perdition, we are, I don't want to say we put our foot on the brake, but our foot is probably a little less on the accelerator there. That keeps the Fed on hold. And it also keeps the, you know, the end point of getting to a recession makes it less likely. So that is that is good. And I think that's part of the reason why the markets have been rallying, because you don't get 2008 and 2009 or those, you know, those big 50, 60 percent drawdowns in the market without, you know, a whopper of a recession, you know, a 20 percent correction, 30 percent correction. Those are bear markets. Those usually happen in kind of more minor um, recessions. And Right now, the uh, recession is sort of a little bit on hold. And if you go back to the chart, what I talked about with TLT, the bond equivalents of the um, – I'll just pull that chart back up again so you could kind of have that in, in your face while we're here. You can see that um, this low yield, meaning, meaning we're still over the 2009 crash low, that uh, stock should be valued at a bit, of a, uh, a bit of a premium. So I think that's been what stubbornly held the markets up. The durable goods orders, um, we know the planes haven't been so good. The auto numbers actually were a little bit okay. I think that those um, are, I, I do think we're into a bit of a peak auto type of a situation, but I think lower gas prices have probably upped the price point. People are back buying SUVs. Um, that's been what's being reported by these motor companies. Those, of course, are the highest margin cars that they can sell, and it's. Uh, I guess it's good. Um, housing, the numbers have been a little bit mixed. I could uh, tell you anecdotally, I've noticed some slowing in New York. At least the rate of change in terms of the price appreciation has definitely slowed, and in some cases, it has come down a little bit. Uh, you know, these durable goods orders, in my opinion, have been really pretty crappy, and I, I think people, you know, finally, after all these, after 10 months of contraction, they finally bought a new toaster. You know, I joke around about this, that we're, you know, we're, we're basically a toaster-powered economy, and it's, it's really actually quite sad, but yes, people did buy some toasters and probably some whatever they've been putting off for the last 10 months. Um, I don't think that that's great for the economy, but it you know means that people who put off finally couldn't put off any longer. So that's kind of where we stand. That where things are bad, but they're not getting as bad as fast, so to speak. Then um, then of course the you know the Fed looks at the dollar, which is still I think stubbornly strong. They're concerned about, it. and of course the the S and P five hundred. And I usually discuss spy the. Um, the problem here is is this number with regard to the Fed. The higher the market rallies, you can see this kind of was a head fake for them. They kind of thought things were hunky dory, and this was really just the year end kind of Santa Claus rally that came a little bit early in November, and then they you know they sold the bejesus out of it into the end of the year. That was sort of the lock in, I guess. Uh, I feel that the um, Fed gets hoodwinked a little bit when they see markets are stabilizing. They feel, you know, everyone feels good, right, on an up day. That's um, really been actually a huge problem and why I think so many people have been challenged in the market. And I did talk about that a little bit in my Periscope a bit. So if you're curious to know about that and hear my take on why, you know, people have been challenged and, you know, applying the 2013 strategy improperly, take a listen to my Periscope. It's, I believe, the next video after that. I don't want to be too repetitive and, and go over that. I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter. I'll basically just say this. I think people are trying to short at bad locations here. Uh, you know, trying to play for the horizontal breakdown, and then they're, you know, they get stopped out basically of their shorts, and then they flip and get long at the wrong point, and then they, you know, you kind of rinse and repeat. Anyway, with regard to the S and P, we have rallied quite a bit. You basically have one, two, three, four, a quadruple bottom. That is kind of rare in um, S and P parlance. It doesn't really work like that, but we do have it. Um, we did not quite get to the primary trend line or to back to this kind of reference low, but instead we have rallied. Um, we have a Fed day range here. I've talked about this, the 187.06 and the 191.56, and basically having to be long on the uh, one side of the Fed and short on the other side of it, and we are clearly on the right side of the Fed. Um, this is about a 20-point or so rally from from trough to peak here, that is a very, very large move in SPY. Um, there are, is some good news and there is some bad news. 
So let's start off with the good news, I guess. I'll be a little bit optimistic. Um, the good news here is that we are above the 100 MA. We are above the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. We have now broken a downtrend line with a close above a downtrend, which is key. You have a 20-day moving average, which is clearly moving upward. You have a 50 MA, which is stabilizing. It hasn't quite bent upward yet. Um, but, you know, it's kind of going the right direction, and we are on the right side of the 50-day moving average. The bad news here comes in is that when you start getting above 197.86, 199.84, you know, into close to this 200 to 202 area, to a 190, really, if you want to be quite specific, you start getting into res past support, which should now be resistance. You can see on Friday what happened. We didn't quite get the 200 MA, although I believe it or not, I still think that that is possible um, somewhere you know in this like 202 area. But you could see you had these hammer lows. These you know these the little last time we kind of had a triple bottom. You rallied up to a lower high. You had this kind of gap down. They tried to hold it. They were successful for a day. The next day they even got up still a little bit higher. Look where it topped out to the tick. 201.90. If you look in the um, upper left-hand corner of the screen, you see the H under under the spider. It's 201.90. That's where this bar topped out. Then we had, once you lost these lows again with this gap, it was a gap in basically in go, and you had free fall. So my concern is that if you were long here, you now have been praying that the market comes back, and you'll be kind of apt to take your profits. Everyone's a technician these days, right? So if you look at um, my thinking here is that we've kind of come a long way and it would probably behoove the bulls for a little bit of sideway action maybe, maybe even a little bit of pullback. I think pullback is still quote unquote healthy as long as we are in the box. You know, I've talked about this big potential topping out process of a big top in the market. So as long as we don't, I mean, granted, you know, we, clo we, we hit the high on... Um, on Friday at 201.35, so we didn't quite get the 201.90 or the 200 MA, but we got pretty close. Um, we got kind of close to this gap. Um, if you look at the potential for SPY next week, the given move is $3 and basically 40 cents. It's really 39 and a half. That would take you on an up move to 203.83. The close here um, from the breakdown is 203.87, so we could potentially finally fill this gap, or if we move down, it would be 197.04, which is um, a little bit below this range. So, the, uh, and I uh, believe it or not, I really think a move down could kind of get a lot more violent, considering the VIX is where it is, the lo the lower part of it. So I think the risk reward here is the close to the gap here. The risk to the downside, I think, could be a move even back to the 50 or maybe even, I, I don't know where the 20 would be at the time when we got there, but there definitely could be a move back, you know, at least to this like 194 and 195 level. That's been an important level. You can see that was a little bit of resistance here. We had the 194, 95 and then had a bit of a pullback. So that's where I think we could potentially go, at least in the short term, potentially much more. In the weekend review video, I mean, in, sorry, in Periscope, I discussed how to potentially play this. Um, I think you can play, if you're still long, you want to start. I, I've been lightening up as we've been moving up and getting close to this area. I started a little bit here and now I sold quite a bit of stuff I had long on Friday. Um, and I think you could do even still more as you get, you know, close to the 201.90, the 200 MA. And if we do get the gap filled, to me, this would be an amazing writer rate out short. This also, believe it or not, could be a good writer right out short if we open up week on Monday. I think if you were to take out the low of this day, the um, 199.03 in a gap, it could potentially, you could see a little bit of a bounce, but I do also think it could have the potential to be a gap and go to the downside. And what you'd really be looking to see here is where the opening, the regular trading hours low of day is in relation to the overnight low. Once you would get, let's say the, uh, let's say this for example, let's say the overnight low is lower than the regular trading hours um, low, then there is a potential for a move to the upside. However, if the 
regular trading hours low gets taken out and it takes out the overnight low as well, then you have a potential for, a, 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 I think, a quite a, a severe down day. So you really want to watch this Friday range considering this was the kind of breakout day that took out the downtrend line here. So I would say kind of either way, it's a little bit, I mean, I know that sounds, I'm a little bit cautious here short term just because we've moved so far. So I would say that a move up here is probably an opportunity to lighten longs and maybe even to eventually short into. And then a move below here would be a move to, you know, I, I think could be an, an almost an immediate short um, immediate short play. It's just a matter of where you kind of want to um, get your location in because I do think we are going to be due for a little bit of a pullback soon. I mean, look, it's possible we power up even still higher. I mean, basically your low here was the um, 187.93, and this basically took you up to 211. I mean, that is a pretty pretty big move. So yeah, I mean, there is some there is still a little bit of more gas in the tank, but I, I do think that the um, this area here is going to start becoming a lot more um, a lot more resistance as we continue to move higher. The risk reward to me is starting to get <clears throat> a little bit more for a pullback. IWM is showing, you know, it's weak. It's definitely below the consolidation bar. Um, this actually had a, a look complete look below. We kind of got back to trend, failed, had a bit of a false breakdown. I would say that this was a bit of a look below and fail also, and that's why this has been a bit of a screamer back to the upside. So I think that there could be, like like with I, like with SPY, there could be a little bit more gas in the tank up to like these 211s, maybe the 212s, but um, you know, it's it's probably not as good of a buy as it was down, um, you know, down in this area near these near these reference lows. You can see, look where these reference lows basically took you to. So I'm looking at a Fibonacci level, 50% retracement is basic. I mean, we're basically at the 38. Um, it's very possible that um, you know it get, it does press a little bit more. Maybe we even get a downtrend line that touch. That to me would be absolutely amazing. I mean, look at this. If this after this many days up, if we had like some kind of really parabolic move, look where this ties into. The downtrend line would be right with the body here. I'd have to see where that would tie in with SPY, but to me that would be an amazing right or right out short type of a situation. The Qs have been holding up well, also still with inside the box. Um, if you look, I drew a Fibonacci retracement. You basically had a bit of a look below. This often happens with the 61.8. The 61.8 sometimes violates a little bit. Um, I kind of, I used to use it really like precisely. Now I just use kind of between the 61.8 and the 78.6. I even factor that in sometimes um, for where I would be looking to buy, where I put some buy orders in. But this area was key. Uh, we rallied back up. We were above the 50, which is good, and that is now first. It's still down, but it's kind of looking like it wants to turn. You have a little bit of, you have multiple days now of consolidation. One, two, three days of consolidation. So I would be a little cautious if you start losing these 104.87s. You know, 105 I had talked about being a really key level. We're basically there. If this level can hold, I would say we have some more room up. If it falters, you know, there is unfortunately a good amount of room to the downside, potentially five bucks worth. So I'd be a little bit cautious with that as well. Although some of those names are are behaving a little bit better. Um, with regard to Apple, um, we have we have basically have some poor lows in here. Um, I really did think that the 92 had the potential to break and we would see the 85s, however they held. We got back up to 100, and I had discussed that the next move would be to 103. Um, the 103 is really this area, the um, 103.74 to 103.12. We're basically there. It's starting to resist a bit. If we clear the 103s, it's a pretty decent shot up to, the, um, to these resistances here, and like the 107s to 109s, which you know, are very possible. Again, we could also see the downtrend line. It wouldn't shock me. I don't think a lot of people are in Apple here. And it wouldn't shock me to see it kind of overshoot a little bit. They do have earnings coming up. So if they rally hard into earnings, it might be a little bit of uh, an opportunity to short into. 
I love for Apple, and I talk about this, I really like this for a lot of stocks, but I like the shake and bake setup. I like when um, stocks sell off ahead of earnings, particularly high quality ones like Apple, and kind of have a bit of a panicky move. And then you can kind of buy it for a long. So it's kind of rallying a little bit ahead of time. So I'd be a little bit cautious here with Apple. You might even want to kind of prune the hedges here if it does get a bit of a, um, a ramp back up. You can see that these um, this 103 level was very important before and I think could be some resistance here, at least for the very short term. Facebook. Um, all right, so I had sold some puts in this when we got around the 99 area. I actually got them off a little bit below. Um, no, I'm sorry, not that move. It was this move, actually. Um, I had talked about selling some Facebook um, on the on the really the run up around the 110s and then really that you want to kind of liquidate it up at 116.07. It did get a little bit of a bump higher, but man, did this thing come down pretty hard. Um, and I would be a little bit, I was saying that this area here was the key area to hold the one, um, the, the one, the 99.24 area. That was the breakout. You can see it, it's been important level. And we basically held it. I mean, you, you went below, you had some look belows, but you didn't close any bodies below, which is good. And now we're back up here to the um, the 110s, and I had talked about wanting to um, to trim a little bit into here. So, yeah, longer term, I'm bullish on Facebook, but it's moved a lot, and I'm a little bit cautious because look where this high was here, this 110.65, and we basically are getting up into that area. So... I would be looking to, I already did, but um, if you're still long, I'd be look, kind of looking to be, start booking some profits uh, up here and then maybe reload again on a bit of a dip. Um, I do think that they're going to have some pretty good earnings, though, so we're going to have to um, see where we are in relation to there. Uh, Amazon is it didn't quite get the full 100% retracement. It is through the downtrend line, which is interesting, but the 50-day moving average here has been has basically been its kryptonite. So if you can get a move above the 50, my guess is you might even get a rally up a little bit, still a little bit further. But uh, the 50 here, if you want to, if you're playing short, you basically want to be right or right out against this, like either 585 or um, that's really how I would, I would, I think it would work. But you could also use the 50-day moving average as a uh, as a good area. Um, seasonally, this isn't usually the best for Amazon. This is usually more of a holiday play. So I would love to be, if this does have some kind, if there is a bigger pullback in the market, I would be more interested in buying it lower. My concern with Amazon here is that we're making lower highs and it is still making lower lows. So what I would really like to see though, and I guess you're starting to see it here a little bit, is higher lows and some higher highs but we haven't we have yet to take out a previous um, swing high. So this was the run up ahead of their earnings. You had the I guess the uh, shake up or the bake and then the shake. Um, so we'll have to see how that like I said, we'll have to see how that kind of plays out, but the 50 day MA is really very key here. Netflix is into some resistance also. This is kind of becoming a, a constant theme. These lows basically held. You did get a little bit lower. I've actually been looking for Netflix to retest 70 or somewhere between there and the primary trend line. Maybe we'll still get it. Who knows? But um, you do now have some higher lows in with some higher highs. The bad news is is that you're um, right to the downtrend resistance here. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And we know that 103.88 to 105 was were some key levels. So. Again, this is a risk reward question here. You know, is it good to buy at 101 when you know 103.88 and 105 are resistances still above? Uh, my answer to that is probably not. You're going to want to um, probably wait for some type of a pullback, see it make still a still higher low, and then you know look to um, to try and play it that way. Um, 93.55 is a very important level. Um, it's basically these lows. It was an after hours low that was never achieved fully on this earnings. So I guess if you're long, you're longer term in the stock, this is really the floor. You don't really want to see it get below these 93s. But, you know, I mean, you're up at 101. It's, a, it's, it's, it's not like you're playing around, around in this area where it's real close. It's, it's, it's close to a downtrend. So I'd be looking at books and profits on any um, moves up, you know, still higher. 
Uh, longer term, I'm a little bit bullish on Netflix. I'm just a little bit shorter term cautious here. Google, I've been saying for a while, there's really no gaming it at this point. I really like to play Google at the extremes, either on channel lows or against channel highs. So I'm not really doing anything in there. I'm just either waiting for it to come back down to the channel low to buy or to get back up to the channel high to, to short. Um, really quite simple. Price line staying stubbornly strong, very surprising because the last few times, although I guess here you had the gap and there were a few days up and then it kind of filled the gap. Um, here it had run up hard ahead of the earnings and then gapped and then crapped and filled the gap. Here you had a pretty nasty breakdown, a really strong run up ahead of the earnings, a gap which has held for the most part and it's just been grinding higher. Um, if you're long, I guess... 1280.97, if you want to be long against that area, you can see, look where the bodies here kind of start. Um, I think that that's the area. Anything above there remains bullish. Anything below there to me gets a little bit iffy. I probably would wait for this. I do think that this is eventually going to have some bit of a pullback and getting a little bit overdone on the stochastic. So um, that's just my thought. Um, price line you know, let's see. We basically are a little bit above the 618. You know how I said there are sometimes some overshoots. You're basically getting to where this kind of broke down from. So I would really be looking more to be taking profits in Priceline, just my opinion. Chipotle, same kind of a story, um, getting a little overdone on the stochastics to the upside. We basically did hold trend. It didn't quite touch, but basically a trend touch rallied, consolidated, and now getting back to this sort of breakdown area. You had a bit of a look above and fail. So if you want to play short, I think you could play short against this um, 541.93. Longer term, I do think Chipotle is going to have a rally back up to close to 600. This 589.93 to 597.33, let's just call it 600, maybe even to 620. I mean, who knows? But short term here, I'm a little bit cautious just because we've run so far so fast this is basically a move from 400 to 530 uh, well above 535 541 so yeah i mean i'd probably get interested in buying this back you know maybe in the 470s 480s against the 50 day to me would be a uh, would be would be a good level maybe if that is upward sloping at the time that being said we are in a bit of an uptrend i think you can um, assume that higher until you know the trend until the trend breaks we are a little bit far away from trend and it's an expensive stock so i would prefer to buy it on a trend touch i think put ratios are also good meaning you'd buy like one of these puts and then sell two times out of the money against maybe against the 50 day that would make sense you really want to wait for a down move to start to do that though um, some of my stocks that i talk about i had kind of Played a little bottom picking with American Express when I saw this kind of look below and fail. This was sort of an island reversal. I'd sold some puts um, around in this area once I think we started getting above here. And that had worked out. I started to close them. I still have some on, but um, we are getting into some interesting areas here. Uh, we're up to basically getting close to the gap. You have a declining 50-day moving average. So... I'm starting to think that you might want to take a little bit of profits and then kind of just because this is so many days up and so many dollars up, you might want to wait to buy it on a bit of a dip. Again, maybe in like the 55 level where this kind of broke out from. But I do think that this will eventually fill the gap. But like I said, risk reward wise, I'd prefer not to be kind of pressing longs right into a, fi a declining 50 day moving average. Um, I think we can do maybe a couple of more. Um, someone asked me to do Walmart, so I'll do it. This has been a long-term decliner. It's just in a bit of a consolidation range. Uh, it is kind of, look here, holding the 50-day moving average well. So I think as long as you have closes above the 50-day, you can play it long on dips. You're also now above a 200, which is good. Um, the bad news, the bad news bears, so to speak, is look where this gap fill comes into here. It's basically these lows, so um, between 71.49 and really the 72.61, if this is really where the made breakdown came from, this, this gap, there are a lot of people who want to get their money back. So I do think that there is probably some more room up into there. 
I would be looking to um, lighten up as you get into this sort of volume distribution there. Anyway, um, let's end it a little bit earlier. I know I've been going a little bit over lately, but we're close to 45 minutes. Anyhow, if you're not following me, follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Justin Pulitzer. I also, if you like this video, please leave some comments. Um, please hit the thumbs up. I always like getting a little bit of love there. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You will get notifications when I post weekend review videos like this, Periscope rebroadcast videos, or special edition videos. Anyway, let's have a good rest of our weekend, the last few hours of that, and cheers.